Hello and welcome again to my Physical Science Online Lecture Series. In today's video, I wanted to introduce the topics of periodic motion and harmonic oscillators, waves, and sound. Um, so let's start off with periodic motion. Uh, periodic motion just basically means any kind of motion which repeats itself. This includes everything from the orbits of planets to the uh, rotation of your tires on your car or on a bicycle to the uh, repetition of waves on the uh, shore of a lake or ocean to the uh, oscillatory motion of a pendulum like in a grandfather clock. Um, so that's periodic motion, and uh, the, the word basically implies the first parameter that I want to introduce, which is the period. So period of motion means how much time does it take for the motion to repeat itself. Um, so in the context of an oscillation, how much time does it take for a whole oscillation to occur? In the context of a planetary orbit, how much time does an orbit take? and so on. Um, so one particular type of periodic motion is an oscillation. And so what I have here is a spring, uh, because a spring is a type of uh, oscillator. Basically, if I pull down on this mass and release it, it starts bouncing up and down. And so each complete bounce is uh, one oscillation, so one, two, three, four, five. That's how many oscillations uh, have occurred. So this whole motion that starts here, then here's one oscillation, two oscillations, three oscillations, etc. So the period is how much time does each one of those take to occur. Um, a related parameter is called the frequency. Frequency uh, comes from the question how frequently does it happen? <clears throat> how frequently does it happen? That means how many of these oscillations occur per unit time. So period and frequency are usually related by the simple relationship that period is uh, the reciprocal of frequency, and vice versa. So if you have a period of two seconds, then you have a frequency of one half of a hertz. If you have a period of three seconds, then your frequency is a third of a hertz. If you have a period of a half a second, then your frequency is two hertz, etc. The unit hertz just means uh, per second. So um, those two are, are two of the three um, parameters that you need to basically explain um, a harmonic motion. The third one is the amplitude of motion. So the amplitude is basically how what is the largest uh, distance away from the equilibrium point that the thing is going to be. So here's equilibrium. So the distance from here to here, if I pull it down this far, that's the amplitude. And the whole motion for a, a simple harmonic oscillator is actually covers a distance of twice the amplitude. Um, so uh, these simple harmonic oscillators are one of the major topics of physics. They're, they're sort of used in everyday life for timekeeping. Uh, for example, a grandfather clock uses the oscillations of a pendulum. A Old-fashioned pocket watch or wristwatch uses the oscillations of a spring. A newer pocket watch, uh, maybe is digital, uses a might use like an RC rise time or fall time, but it can also use a quartz oscillator, uh, in which you basically shock a quartz and you get a periodic um, switching, basically between it being uh, easy for current to flow and not easy for current to flow. So that's a sort of oscillation as well. And a very uh, modern is the atomic clocks, which uses transitions of electrons in the 
shell of a sodium atom. Um, so that's periodic motion. Uh, that, excuse me, that's a simple harmonic oscillation. Another type of periodic motion is wave motion. And wave motion can be thought of as uh, acting as a collection of coupled harmonic oscillators. And there's actually two types of wave motion. Uh, the first, broadly speaking, is what would be called a, uh, a uh, transverse wave. And the second is what's called a longitudinal wave. So transverse wave, uh, in both kinds of waves, you have a disturbance that's propagating through or along a medium. Um, so case in point, I have a string uh, that is going to have a mass on the end of it. So I'll go ahead and hook up my mass to one end of this string. And uh, so right now, I have this my string along here. And actually, if I turn the camera so it can see everything, I have a little driver set here that basically oscillates back and forth. And I've got a function generator control box for that driver. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the driver. And uh, let's turn up the amplitude so we can actually see what's going on. Um, if I pull off the camera so that you can actually see string, you maybe notice that the string is moving. If I turn it off, here's the string with no oscillations. Here's the string with an oscillation at frequency 100 uh, hertz. So that's a wave traveling down the string. And I can actually go ahead and change, for example, the frequency at which these waves are sent down the uh, string and you can basically see the waves traveling along this string as this happens. I can even turn up the amplitude so the wave gets a little larger. I'm going to go ahead and shut it off for now. Um, so what kind of wave did I just create uh, with this uh, string setup. Well, the string itself, each element of the string, is basically just moving up and down around some equilibrium position. So the equilibrium position is how the string is right now when there's no waves traveling on it. It's at equilibrium right now. Uh, well, it's wobbling a little. As the waves are traveling on, down it, like so, That's not equilibrium anymore. Okay, so each wave involves a segment of the string, or each segment of the string during the wave is just moving up and down like this. Yet if you watch the, the actual waves, they propagate along the string in this direction, whereas the string itself is just moving up and down. The waves are moving along the string this way. So the motion of the string itself is perpendicular to the direction in which the waves are moving, and that means that what this string gives us is what's called a transverse wave. Um, there's a second type of wave, which is called a longitudinal wave. And a longitudinal wave basically means um, it'd be equivalent to each section of the string oscillating back and forth like this, or like this, or like this, as the wave is moving along the string in this way. In other words, each section of the medium vibrates or oscillates parallel to the direction in which the wave itself actually propagates in. So um, the most maybe familiar or common uh, wave of that sort is a sound wave. And as it turns out, I have with me a uh, speaker that I can also hook up to the function generator. 
And basically what happens is the speaker oscillates back and forth like this, it generates sound waves that are oscillating like this, and the waves propagate in this direction. So it's a longitudinal wave. And you can actually see the speaker vibrating if I turn it on. Let's turn down the volume a little bit. If I turn it on and if I shift the frequency down to low enough, you can see this thing moving up and down, back and forth. This is 3 hertz, so 3 waves per second. And uh, here's 6 hertz, 9 hertz, here's 1 hertz, here's 15 hertz. Uh, at some point, you stop being able to easily see the motion of the speaker. If I go up, and here's 40 hertz. You can see it if you look very closely. Um, so, in any case, the, the motion of this membrane on the speaker is back and forth like this, and the waves are propagating in this direction. It means it's a longitudinal wave. So, um, probably you're wondering, because you've noticed that, uh, that this, uh, I just use terms like frequency in context of a wave. So what does a frequency mean for wave? Well, uh, terms like frequency and amplitude and period still apply when we're talking about waves, and they mean very similar things to what's meant when we're talking about a simple oscillator. Namely, the frequency is uh, how many waves per second are generated and propagate through the medium. The period is how much time elapses between one wave arriving at a certain point and the next wave arriving at that point. So for example, how much time between one wave arriving at the, the, the uh, microphone of my camera and the next. The amplitude is how large the wave is from uh, peak to equilibrium. So the peak to trough difference, if you're looking at like waves on an ocean, is actually twice the amplitude. Um, so amplitude is maximum displacement from equilibrium. Same as with an uh, uh, oscillator. Okay, well, uh, there's also some new parameters that you can uh, think of with waves. One is the speed at which the waves propagate. So for sound waves in air, that speed is 343 meters per second. Uh, for waves on a string, it depends upon how much mass the string has per unit length and how much tension is on the string. So actually, speed is the square root of tension divided by mass per unit length. Um, and uh, the other parameter of interest is the wavelength, which is the distance, the actual physical distance between you know one wave and the next wave. So if you're standing at the ocean, you see a wave arrives and the next wave is 10 meters away from you, then the wavelength is 10 meters. So wavelength and frequency and speed are all related in as much as the wave speed is equal to the wavelength times the wave frequency. It's also equal to the wavelength divided by the wave period. Um, there's one other term that I wanted to introduce briefly with waves and that is um, intensity. So intensity is energy in the wave per unit time, meaning power, per unit area. And the intensity of a wave, for example, if you have a sound wave, is basically going to fall off like 1 over the distance from the source squared. Okay, And one other little misconception that I want to clarify before calling it um, good for the day is that each um, each wave does not actually transport the matter in the the uh, substance that this wave is propagating through. It's a disturbance in some material or some substance. It's not transporting matter, it's transporting the disturbance. It, carries with it energy, it carries with it momentum, it carries with it power, it does not carry with it uh, matter. So like on this string, this piece of string just moves up and down right here. It doesn't move from here to here, even though the wave does.
So that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.